So in this video, we're going to talk about Katev Yassin's play Intelligence Powder, uh, which I'm reading out of Modern African Drama, edited by Bayadum Jaifo. Um, so Yassin is um, an Algerian playwright and novelist uh, and poet. Uh, he Intelligence Powder is a really interesting, fun play. Uh, it is a play that consists in a bunch of vignettes, basically. These are very short scenes. They're somewhat episodic, they're, they're fairly disconnected, but they revolve around a particular theme. And that theme is about the changeability, the, the transience of life. Uh, the reversibility of life, if you will. And I think we get this um, this theme expressed first fairly early in the play. Um, Puff of Smoke is, a, is our protagonist here, and the Sultan's horse hit Puff of Smoke, or Puff of Smoke hit the Sultan's horse, uh, and the Sultan took that to be a bad sign for his hunting trip, so he had Puff of Smoke arrested. But then when his hunting went well, he released Puff of Smoke and gave him a purse of gold. Um, the Sultan says, fortunately, thank the Lord, you didn't bring us any bad luck. Puff of Smoke says, who brought who bad luck? But bad luck always changes to good luck. It's good luck that you have to be afraid of because it always turns to bad luck and so on down the line. There are some who've built a whole philosophy on that. Then the stage direction say he respectfully takes leave of the sultan and exits. For example, if some pickpocket stole my purse, that, alas, would prove my theory. So this is the idea that really kind of at the heart of this play is reversals and the change of fortune from bad to good and good to bad. But Puff of Smoke largely actually drives these changes within the play because he is a trickster figure. He creates sets of events. He creates occurrences that people then... that basically sort of trick people into doing the opposite of what they would want to do. And we get these things repeatedly. So, for instance, um, we uh, we get this scene, which uh, the stage direction say, Puff of smoke leaning against an orange tree holds a donkey by the bridle. The chorus spreads out around him. The chorus leader says, What are you doing all by yourself with this donkey? Puff of smoke says, I'm contemplating while I wait for the market to open. I'm trying to figure out for myself who's the master and who's the slave. Is it the donkey? Is it me? The chorus leader says, do you need any help? Puff of Smoke says, no, I just wish I lived in a world where people and donkeys lived apart. No disrespect intended to you, of course, talking to the donkey. The chorus leader says, leave your donkey with us and go for a walk. That'll give you a new outlook on life. Puff of Smoke leaves the donkey and goes off as the chorus murmurs. The chorus leader to the chorus says, Take this animal, but leave me the bridle, and get out of here as quickly as you can. Blackout. Lights. That's the transition, by the way. Blackout and then lights. That's a very standard transition in this play. Then the chorus and the donkey have disappeared. Puff of Smoke enters. Puff of Smoke says, where's my donkey? The chorus leader with the bridle around his neck says, at your service. Puff of Smoke says, I was talking about the donkey. The chorus leader says, I'm your donkey. A curse from my mother has changed me to this form I have now. Puff of Smoke says, It seems to me this man thinks he's a donkey, and since I think I'm a man, maybe I'm really a donkey. It must be I'm under a kind of double illusion. Um, and so he treats he treats this um, chorus leader as a donkey, and there's this bizarre scene, again, where Puff of Smoke really sort of plays up being a trickster figure, not even for any actual gain. Like, he's not 
He's not making money off of this. He's just sort of doing this to, I guess, poke fun at the powerful, really. Because Puff of Smoke takes his last few coins, because his, his, his purse of coins that the Sultan gave him actually was stolen. Um, so Puff, uh, Puff of Smoke takes his last few coins, puts them up the donkey's butt, or in this case, the chorus leader's butt. Um, and then he, uh, Puff of Smoke sends for the Sultan and basically tells the Sultan through years of contemplation and mystic investigation and alchemical practice, I have finally found this mystical holy donkey that produces gold instead of dung. And the Sultan is like, well, that sounds cool. And so Puff of Smoke is like, I will prove it to you, but really um, magic must be done at night. So we'll give you a little, I'll give you a little bit uh, of evidence now, but then we'll have to wait for darkness for the real magic. The donkey poops out the three coins that Puff of Smoke had put up there, and the Sultan and his uh, court are convinced. And they're like, ah, this is fantastic. This is going to save the save the kingdom. And the so night comes, it gets dark, uh, they have fed the donkey the best grass, uh, they've put him on a really nice, fancy carpet, and then Puff of Smoke basically says, all right, now put your hands behind the donkey's butt so that you can grab the gold as it comes out. And the donkey poops into the sultan and his courtier's hands. And then Puff of Smoke is like, ah, the these courtiers, they've they've cast an evil spell on the donkey so that they can keep the gold for themselves. And the way they will prove that is by uh, forcing them to eat a bunch of grass and then poop on this rug in the dark. And basically the puff of smoke convinces the sultan to go along with this plan and gets the courtiers to poop into the sultan's hands. So it's just these like bizarre random bits and pieces here. Um, at one point, Puff of Smoke has a bunch of sand that a donkey, a different donkey was hauling and it uh, fell off. The, the packages of sand fell off the donkey and the guy who was leading the donkey just left them there. Um, Puff of Smoke takes some of the sand and starts basically marketing it as intelligence powder. And he convinces a bunch of people to go along with it. He convinces the Sultan to go along with it, etc., etc. And so, again, it's just these sort of bizarre tricks. But they're all about, again, this sort of reversal of fortune and the changeability of the world, the insubstantia insubstantiality of of existence. Um, and again, basically we just, we get a whole bunch of these short semi connected vignettes in which these themes are explored. <laughs>